Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas and welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing a candle making tutorial and we are going to be doing a mozzie repellent candle. So I've been having the biggest issue with mozzies at the moment because it is coming into summer in Australia and I live out in the bush. So I am getting mozzies in my room every single night and it's driving me nuts. So I have decided to research what repels mozzies and make it into a candle that I can burn every single night before bed and hopefully I will not have this issue anymore. So there's a few items that you're going to need. One, you're going to need some wax. I like to buy mine in bulk. I am using a soy wax that has been formulated to work for container candles. You can buy all different waxes. You just need to research what wax is best for the job you're doing. And on every single candle website, they always list what works best. You're going to need a container, whatever container you like. I've just got a glass one with a lid. That way, when I am not using it, it's going to hold in all of those essences. A wick, you can either use a wood wick or a paper wick or a cotton wick. This one is a cotton wick. And then I've got some dried lavender because I've researched and found out mozzies do not like lavender. And then I have also got some eucalyptus lemon. I have got some black pepper essence. I've got some tea tree essence and some lavender essence and I'll go into a little bit about what with uh, I will go into a little bit more about what does what uh, uh. Then I've also got some essences. So I've got um, eucalyptus lemon essence, I've got black pepper essence, I've got tea tree and lavender. And I will go into a little bit more detail about what all these do and how they also help prevent mozzies and why mozzies do not like these. Oh yeah, mozzie is short for mosquito in Australia. So the first step for this is I just need to start melting down my wax. The wax that I have, it needs to be heated up to 190 degrees and then I need to cool it down to 135 before I add my essences in. Okay guys, so the first step is just to measure out my wax. So today I'm using a soy wax. This wax has been designed, as I said before, to work in containers, but there are some soy waxes out there that are better forming for pillar candles, like your freestanding candles. So just depending on the type of candle you wanna make does depend on the type of wax that you need to buy. I like soy waxes because they're clean burning waxes and I find them quite easy to work with. Now there is a mathematical formula you can work out to know how much to weigh out but I find that just measuring out two amounts of the size of my jar when it melts down because obviously there's air when it's stacked like this. Um, when it melts down, it actually melts down to the perfect amount. I've never had an issue with this. So I just did two amounts and then I put it into my double boiler method. So the double boiler just lets me control the heat better than if I was to put it in the microwave because the microwave can heat up the wax too much because I need to get this to 190. So I'm just going to be checking on this throughout this process and just using my thermometer to make sure I get it to the 190 mark. The first essential oil that I'm going to be adding in is black pepper, which I was shocked about this one, but it actually contains picaridin, which helps mask your smell from mosquitoes. Next up, we've got tea tree oil. So a study that was published in 2010 showed in the Australian Journal of Entomology showed that tea tree oil was exceptionally effective against mosquitoes. Lavender oil is extremely potent and it also contains lanolu, which helps protect the lavender plant from bugs. And the last essential oil that we're going to be using today is lemon eucalyptus oil. So the CDC or the Center for Con Disease and Control Prevention has approved eucalyptus oil as an effective ingredient against mozzie repellents. Uh, recent studies show that uh, lemon eucalyptus oil can provide protection like 95% protection for up to three hours. I just got a little measuring cup and started to measure out all of my essential oils. This took a little bit of time because the dropper on it wasn't the best. Well, it didn't even have a dropper. It's one of those containers. Um, so I had to do quite a lot of shaking it to get the right amount. I would suggest going a bit stronger than you normally would with um, essences 
um, if you are making a larger candle for outside. So I kind of went at probably a full 10% of essential oil to wax ratio for this um, just because I wanted this candle to be strong and repel my mosquito issue so do go a bit more heavy-handed than what you would if you were just using an essential oil or an essence just for the nice aroma because we actually want this candle to do its job so I just gave my container a wipe out at the top just because it had the wax that I used to measure out. And then I have these little sticky dots. It's basically just double sided tape but in a dot version. And I'm going to use that to hold my wick down. Now your wick size does depend on your candle size. So if you are unsure, um, do a few test candles to work out the sizing that you need. Um, because you don't want a candle wick that is too big because then it's going to burn the wax too fast and a candle wick that's too small won't be able to burn the wax enough to get a full melt pull. Now I got my wax up to my 190 so I took it off the heat. I don't want to add my essential oils in when it's at that 190 temperature. Taking it up to that 190 just helps expand out the wax molecules and then I'm going to let it cool down to 130 which was on the package for the suggested cooling time before adding in my essential oils. Now once I've got it down to my cooling time like cooling wax temperature then I add my essential oils in and you want to mix for around two to three minutes to make sure that really does combine in the wax and doesn't just sink to the bottom so you need to continuously mix for a few minutes before you pour into your container. Also too, if you do pour your wax too hot, um, when it does dry, it's going to contract a bit and you might end up where it pulls away from the glass. So it's always really important to let it get down to that cooling temperature before you pour it. Obviously not too cool where it starts to solidify in your jug, but yeah, you need to get it down to that nice temperature before you do pour it into your container. Now that I've mixed my wax for that three minute mark and all of my essential oils have combined in with the wax, it is time to pour it and it's around the 125 degree mark. Uh, just note that that is for this brand of wax. If you do buy a different brand, just double check. But generally your soy waxes, they're great to pour around that 135 degree mark. Then just with a skewer, I grab my wick and wrap it around so that way I can center it while the wax is cooling down because I don't want my wick to go lopsided. And then I'm just adding lavender, um, dried lavender to the top of my candle. This is mostly just for decoration. And I waited till my candle started to solidify. So you can see how it's white on the bottom. Well, it's starting to cool down and solidify. So that way, all of my dry lavender is just going to stay to the top of the surface and it's not going to fully drop down. If I did this straight after I poured it, probably all of this would end up on the bottom of my candle. So this was about... I'd say like 10 to 15 minutes in, I started to put my lavender on top and that is the perfect timing. Once your candle has cooled, you can then take the skewer out and just get a pair of scissors and just cut the excess of your wick off. So here is the finished candle. It looks so pretty. And this combination of essential oils actually smells really good. I was a little bit unsure about what it would smell like. I just picked these because they all have like anti-bug slash mozzy uh, repellent properties to these essential oils, but they all work actually really well together. I am gonna light this tonight and I will let you guys know on my Instagram how well this worked but fingers crossed it's gonna keep those mozzies away and not keep me up at night with those buzzing from the mozzies but if you like this tutorial please give it a big thumbs up as it lets youtube know to show this video to more candle enthusiasts and if you're new to my channel please do subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell because that way you'll get notified every single time i post a new video and i do tons of art craft and diy projects so i post every single week and thank you guys so much for watching so I've been using my um, muzzy repellent candle for about a week now and I've got to say I'm so impressed. 
I had mozzies in my room the first night I used this and they just disappeared after an hour of this being on. So I've been using it every single night and I normally put it on for an hour to two hours to get that full melt pool before um, I go to bed. And I have literally not had a single mozzie annoying me and this is Queensland in Australia and I live in the bush and this candle is amazing. I'm gonna make some more in like really big sizes for outside. Um, I'm absolutely obsessed with it.